Hi, so before we get started, I'd just like to ask you, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel and also at the end of the video, please consider give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. Also leave a comment below on ways to and suggestions and ways to improve this video moving forward. Let's go. In this video, we're going to cover JUnit test suites as well as JUnit for categories. So I've got here four test classes. So I've got here performance tests. I've got here a suite of integration tests, as well as two feature tests. So again, this is just an example to show the, um, you know, the power of uh, JUnit 4 in terms of test suites. And this is obviously a contrived example, but this will do for this, uh, for this demonstration. So with this categorization or suites of tests, in IntelliJ, you know, one one uh, you you can basically come to the runners or the the containing package and run you know all the tests here. And notice that all of the tests ran, and um, you can see that the tests just by running the package, all of the tests uh, were were executed. And I've got each of the tests print um, you know their um, test name. So just by clicking here, I know that these tests ran. But this is you know, a convenience that um, IntelliJ provides in terms of a graphical runner. But notice that I don't have control on the orders that these test suites are running. Moreover, if I am, you know, running this with a tool like Gradle or as part of continuous integration, say TeamCity, then I would need to have a way to group these tests as well as to uh, have the ability to specify an order. And this is where the test suites come. So uh, now let's see how I can group these tests into a test suite and specify an order. So for this, JUnit provides what's called a test suite. The way you define a test suite is as follows. So let's create a class called my test suite. You basically tag it with a, um, there is a special runner called the suite. So this is how I'm defining my um, my test suite, and um, I need to define uh, suite classes. So in here we are going to specify all of the basically the composition of this suite, and this is nothing but the names of the uh, test classes that are part of my suite. So I have the performance, and I have the um, integration tests, I have the feature 1 test, as well as the feature 2 test. So this is how you define a test suite in JUnit 4. So you specify a, a public class uh, and you tag it with use this special suite uh, runner and um, you use this tag suite classes to specify tests that comprise this test suite. Now let's run this and uh, see what we get. So notice that um, I have the test suite here running and the results, everything ran correctly. And notice one thing now, I have control on the order of this uh, test. So for example, if I want the performance test to run last or, you know, an integration test. So I want to change the order here. I want my feature tests to run first, followed by the integration test and performance test. And if I were to run this, notice that now you know the tests ran in the order that I, s that I specified in my test suite. Now another thing that I can do is have a suite of suites. So for example let me create another uh, suite class which I'm going to call um, you know say super suite or my super suite. So just like before run with uh, suite and also use my uh, suite classes and in here I should be able to specify my test suite class and perhaps I could have defined here a um, so this is still a placeholder and if I had another test for example let's create another one regression tests and in here I would have a regression test and I could add this regression test to my uh, super test suite. This would run last for instance. 
So now if I run my super uh, suite, then notice that all of the tests inside my test suite ran in the order specified there, followed by the regression test. So you can compose, um, you know, suites with uh, suites. Okay, so moving on. Let's say now that we have this nice um, test suite and everything is good, but for whatever reason, we notice that feature one test, for example, is a flaky test, meaning it passes or it fails uh, randomly for, you know, the past n um, runs, runs. So we want to investigate this test, but, you know, for now, we just want to mark it as or put in a category of flaky test. And um, we would like to exclude that from the test suite. So this is where, uh, or this is one scenario where the categories in JUnit 4 comes into handy. So categories is essentially another type of runner in, uh, in JUnit 4, and it enables you to categorize tests and then filter, include them or exclude them in your test suite. So the first thing we need to do is we need to specify a marker uh, classes or interfaces, I should say. So let's define here a flaky tests um, interface. So now let's go back to our test. And uh, the way you tag a test as a flaky test using categories is essentially by adding the category uh, tag and you mark it with the flaky test. Okay. Now you can tag a um, a test method or an entire class. But for now, let's work with a um, tagging just a, an individual method. So let's say that we found that this feature one test one here is a flaky test. You know, feature three here, this test is, is also a flaky test. Categories, like I said, is a special runner. So let's say here that, uh, let me create a flaky test and to, to, to use the categories, you basically use the categories uh, runner here. And because we are defining uh, the... Um, so let's include the um, feature one tests as well as the feature um, two tests. Okay, so we have here the two classes that have the uh, flicky tests and now we want to include the category. So now again, this is just a placeholder. And if I run this, I should expect to see only my two flicky tests, okay? Which are these two ones that I tagged feature one test that I tagged with flicky test as well as this guy here. So this is a nice way for you to uh, categorize tests and run just a specific type of tests. Now, this is a flaky test suite. I could have obviously defined the opposite, which is a, let's just say, all but, you know, flaky uh, tests suite. So let's just get this stuff to here. And again, this is just a placeholder. And essentially what I want to do here is I want to exclude uh, the flaky tests category and I want to add my uh, test suite. So what I'm defining here is I'm defining my entire uh, test suite, okay, which if you recall has all of the tests. I mean I could even put my super test suite here. So recall that my super test suite includes my test suite as well as the regression tests and what this category is, is doing as the name implies is running all the tests but the flaky ones. Okay, so it's including my test suite and the regression test. And for my test suite, it's excluding the flaky test one here. Feature one, test one is a flaky test. It's not running. And from feature uh, two tests, it's running feature one and feature two. Recall that feature three has been tagged as a flaky test here. And for the integration test, this run integration test uh, 1, 2, and 3, which is all of them, and performance test is running performance test 1, 2, and 3. And if you see here, you will see that uh, all of the, that's the all of the tests in that suite. So to demonstrate the power of categories, um, let me show you another example. So a 
test method or a class can belong to more than one category. So for now I've just showed you um, a test method or a class that belongs to a single category. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can make a, a test method or, or a test class belong to more than one category. Let me create here a feature tests category, just similar to the, uh, so obviously I want an interface, just similar to the flaky tests uh, category that we created. So remember, these are just uh, marker interfaces here. Let's tag both this uh, class as well as this with a um, this category. Okay, so now we have both feature, feature um, test classes um, uh, belonging to the feature test category. And now let me define a suite for it. Okay, let's just move this thing here expand. Okay, so let me copy all of that stuff here. I want to include all of my feature uh, tests, and but I want to exclude all of my flaky tests. Okay, what I've defined is a, a suite of tests that basically includes all of the feature tests, but excludes the flaky ones. So if I run this, then all of the tests um, here should be excluded because remember, all of these tests in this class belong to the flaky uh, tests and the feature test category. So if I exclude the flaky tests, then the entire test here should be excluded because this is an end. It's a flaky test and a feature test. So if you exclude either, then the entire test should be excluded. This test belongs to the feature test category. But notice that this test here, the test three, it's a flaky test. So this, um, these two tests should be included because they are part of the feature test which is being included here. But the flaky test, which is this test 3, should be excluded. So when I run these um, all feature tests uh, without flaky tests, the only two tests that should run is feature 2 test 1 and feature 2 test 2. So notice that that is the case. Okay, so I hope you found this lesson useful and uh, I hope I have conveyed to you the power of both um, the unit 4 uh, test suites as well as categories, uh, which is a mechanism to filter the um, tests. Thanks for watching.